art enthusiasts to ATN Artward on Atlantic Television Network. This is a network gathering of artworks based on the belief in art for the enjoyment of the creativity, innovation, and the cultural diversity nurtured and displayed by art. It is widely accepted that art plays an important role in sharing knowledge, encourage curiosity, and dialogue. These qualities of art, ATN will continue to support, promote, and protect artists and artistic freedom. Supporting the development of art also means to achieve a free and peaceful world. Nigerian sculpture is a vibrant and diverse art form that reflects the country's rich cultural heritage and history. Rooted in tradition, Nigerian sculpture encompasses a wide range of styles and techniques, from intricate wooden carvings to elaborate bronze castings, often inspired by mythology, religion, and everyday life. Nigerian sculptures tell stories, convey emotions, and collaborate the beauty of the human form. With its deep cultural significance and masterful craftsmanship, Nigerian sculpture continues to captivate audiences around the world, serving as a testament to the creativity and ingenuity of the Nigerian people. Port Harcourt, a city known for its vibrant culture and artistic spirit. Amongst its many talented individuals is a sculptor whose passion for his craft knows no bounds. Today we'll take a trip to Otobo Gallery. Meet Pius Waratimi, a renowned sculptor whose work has captivated audiences both locally and internationally. We we'll sit down with Pius Waratimi to learn more about his inspiration, process, and the significance of sculpture making in Port Harcourt. <music> So, would you worry to me? A fine artist, a sculptor, and um, uh, I'm a cover. What's most important about what I do is that I relate my work to what it takes to be who you are as a sculptor. Uh, I'm happy. that uh, I'm possibly being uh, involved in what I do and getting to know that what I do will interest one or two persons. I just got through an exhibition in Lagos and uh, I was able to um, do a piece that I called uh, the Fisherman's Palo. And the Fisherman's Palo had, uh, had been uh, a team that I've been working on. And that Fisherman's Palo that uh, was exhibited, sold. But I also have a fisherman's color that is in the museum in uh, Bayasa State, my state. But as an artist, uh, I, it took me time to, uh, for people to appreciate that in the art school, you're, you're susceptible to uh, a lot of other things, particularly when as a, a student, you go through all the aspects of the arts. And somehow I ended up being a, a, a graphic artist. But after graduation, I went into wood carving. 
and that is what has made me who I am today. I'm a wood carver, and I branded myself uh, the woodpecker. And um, as uh, it resonated, I was also given an award as uh, the master cover of the Niger Delta in an exhibition that I um, showcased the uh, what is of a fisherman. The fisherman's pallor was what I exhibited in the last exhibition I had in Lagos. And that fisherman's pallor as um, Providence will have it, is sold as a sculptor and a wood cover. I intend to showcase what it is of the people who understand why to carve is important. Thank you very much, sir. Can you give us an in-depth knowledge of wood carving and sculptures? Um, sculpture is vast. There's metal sculpture, wood carving, all the areas of sculpture. Uh, but sculpture is an area where it's a three-dimensional thing or a two-dimensional thing. When it's three-dimensional, you can go around it. When it's two-dimensional, you just place it on the wall. Like, if you look at uh, this gallery you see now, this is three-dimensional. Other pieces you see are two-dimensional because they are placed on the wall. But when you go around it, it's three-dimensional. So when it's three-dimensional, you can go around to appreciate what it is. So sculpture goes across all the areas of either it's wood carving, either it's bronze, fiberglass, Name it. All right, sir. Thank you very much for that insight with this. Can you uh, give us an in-depth knowledge about wood carving? Yeah. Um, wood carving is, um, is a little bit of uh, laborious. It's, you have to you have a chisel and you have to hit on the chisel on a piece of wood because you want to release what is in the wood. If you chip off, you cannot add again. In wood carving, as you chip off, you have chipped off. And so you must release what is in the wood. Every wood has an image. It's the artist that is capable of releasing the image from the wood. And if you do not release the image from the wood, then you have not succeeded in expressing yourself. You have to. And it takes you as a sculptor or a cover to release the image you really require from the wood. And if that is not done, then it means that you have not been able to send a message. Messages are sent because of the things you do and what you want to do. And so, as a wood cover, it's quite elating that at every given time I do my carving, I try to see what is in the wood. Sometimes you, some of the wood I go pick. There are woods people want to uh, use as firewood. And I say, can I have this? And I get it, but they don't know what I'm doing with it. At the end of the day, be fulfilled getting an image out of the wood. So your work often incorporates themes of nature and spirituality. Can you tell us more about your creative process and the messages you aim to convey through your sculptures and wood carvings? I'm a protest artist too, and most of the times what I do, I try to generate a situation where uh, you see my work, let me tell a story. And apart from that too, I'm an artist that believes in the fact that if it's wood, then can we use it? 
can you sit on the wood like where I'm sitting on now uh, and the background of this is because I know as a sculptor and a wood carver, I believe in utility. So whatever I work on, I want it to be, be able, you can use, you can use it. It's not something you are going to hang and uh, you just admire it hanging. It's something I just know that you can use and be comfortable using it. Now let's look at the role of sculpture making and uh, wood carvings in the cultural landscape of Port Harcourt. How do you see it? But I got has a little bit of problems, you know, and why do I say that? Uh, the the art art world is a, a little way out of Port Harcourt. It's in Lagos, but people are making attempts to see how they can uh, uh, bring uh, collectors because you can't walk without collectors. Collectors have to be. Uh, part of who, what you want, and part of artists don't work because they work uh, in isolation. They work expecting that whatever they do, uh, there will be a collector. The collector nature of um, admirers and collectors in Potako um, is a little low. But all the same, that does not stop the artist from creating. Because uh, creating of your artworks has to do with um, you are trying to make somebody collect what you have. It doesn't really need you to be in a location, any part of the world. Because social, social media has made it possible. If you do something that is fantastic and you post on social media, it's very possible for somebody way back in very remote area, who loves it, will say, how much is this? How can I get it? How, what, what, and it's done. So it's not, now, we're not talking about why, whether uh, the Patokat market is uh, weak or the Lagos market, but that do a good work as an artist and put it on social media. Mm. And before you know it, somebody will be asking, how much is it? And if the price is settled, it goes. So how do you choose the materials for your art pieces, both for wood carvings and sculptural works? Uh, well, um, I source my materials so locally, and uh, sometimes too, I pick them up. You know, some woods uh, that uh, nobody thinks is going to be valuable to them, I make sure if somebody owns it, I say, can I pick this off? And how much is it? I pick it up. Mm -hmm. And certain, 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 like I earlier said, what they use as firewood, if I see it as useful, I pick it up. And if I have to pay for it, I pay for it. But basically, um, there are some mills. And there are some mills right now. We have, a, we have a disadvantage in our summits because um, people, people just fell wood and nobody is checking them. We don't plant wood. So most of the things we get from our summit are very unseasoned. And um, you go to the summit, you pick your wood, try and season it. So the source of my wood is at the summit, but as I move around, but I mean, I believe that no matter how small wood is, no matter how uh, unimportant wood is, no wood is wasted. Except you don't know what to do with the wood. Now let's look at challenges. As an artist, what challenges do you face and uh, how do you overcome these challenges? Because yeah, certainly yeah. You, you have, you go through things daily. Yeah, yes. there are challenges. And... Um, Every artist requires sponsorship. Every artist requires support. And we cry out to our system from the local government to the state and the federal. 
the recognition of who we are as artists had never been there. Uh, do, we, do they have anything to do with uh, artists? Artists are supposed to beautify uh, our streets. Artists are supposed to beautify our roundabouts. This place you have come, I operated this place since 19... Um, over, over 40 years now. Wow. Yes, over 40 years now. And I'm still doing things to make people believe that you can come here and relax and look at artworks. That's the encouragement we need government to give to artists. Encourage artists to put things on in roundabouts. Encourage artists to teach people how to live a good life. It's so important that art is life. And if the people appreciate art, there are certain things they shouldn't do. And there are certain things they should do. But art can never be removed from the fact that we just have to be decent about our living. We have come to Otobo Gallery, and Otobo Gallery seems to be congested. Otobo Gallery has another gallery in my community, Alevri. I have a gallery in my community. And the works I have in that gallery are very, 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 they are works I don't want to sell. So posterity will definitely, I will live and die. And most of the things that have happened to artists today and tomorrow and next, and most of the things that have happened to artists who have done good works is because posterity seems to recognize what they do. So art, for me, is uh, something that uh, does not, uh, has no end. The artist is supposed to tell society what is. And most of the works the artist does, uh, should, posterity should be able to say, yes, this was something else. All right, now you mentioned recognition and um you mentioned recognition and encouragement. Yeah. So how how are young artists supposed to be encouraged? What can we do to encourage them? For me, young artists should be practicing. You don't you don't expect it is on the, it's, it's never on the platter of gold. Young artists should be able to say, let me it's how you practice. You must practice, you must make people recognize the fact that you are capable of doing what you are doing. And if that is recognized, it's not, it's, not, it's not an easy thing to say, I'm an artist. You must convince people that you are an artist. And if you do not convince people that you are an artist, then, then you, you, you can't sell. You must be good at what you are doing. And what, what makes you good at what you are doing is your practice. Because uh, according to uh, what we are told, uh, say, practice makes Perfect. Wonderful. Mm. All right. How do you envision viewers interacting with your sculptures and your wood carvings? I will love what I do. If I don't love what I do, I will have branched out to buying and selling. Mm. Yeah. I will have stopped doing what I'm doing. But me, I feel that doing what I'm doing, um, posterity will exonerate me for doing what I'm doing. But what I do is not perishable. It's something that will approve it appreciate with time 
if it does not appreciate now in the generation, more generations yet unborn will say, how did this happen? That's what I hang on to. I hang on to the fact that walk and live and let other people who are yet unborn appreciate what you do. All right. So can you tell us about any significant influences or artists who have inspired your work? Because certainly said you have people you may have looked up to in the earlier years of your, of your career as an artist. Yeah, uh, you know, um, being an artist uh, was a choice from when I was small. And um, not everybody can be an artist. But one thing I have to say here is this. All of us have that artistic... Um, there's an inclination to be who you are. And, you know, in the faculty, in the faculty of man, that's when I mean faculty, in the brain of man, there is no subject that is not there for you. So, if you're an artist, it's because you have a faculty in your brain that makes you an artist. If you are a, a scientist, there's a faculty in your brain that makes you a scientist. So for every brain that a man carries, anywhere he carries, there are faculties. If you don't develop it, it's not developed. But if you develop it, it's always, you benefit from it. All right. Now let's look at experimentation. What roles does your experimentation play in sculptural pieces and wood carvings? Yeah, um, I wish you can. I wish you can. It's possible for you to go and see the things I do. I, like I earlier said, no wood is wasted. I, no matter how small a piece of wood is, I don't throw it away because I know someday I will need it. And like I earlier said too, that um, my university believes in experimentation. You, you are supposed to use what you see to create something that is artistic. You don't um, uh, just say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. If you do not use elements put together. One thing that is important as an artist what are the elements you are going to put together to make a statement? Whether it's a piece of paper, whether it's a straw, whether it's wood, whether, no matter what it is, as much as possible, make sure that you are going to make a statement. No wood is wasted for me, as I'm concerned. Any wood, even the dust uh, that is uh, uh, not being used as wood, can be used to create something. Well, wow, that's very, very, very great. All right. How do you balance technical skill with your artistic expression in your sculptures and wood carvings? You know, technically, uh, apart from uh, the manual stuff, Google have manufactured machines. So it's an incorporation of my of what I do and uh, and uh, the the machines and the tools I have. That would matter what matters. If you know how to use your tools, and you know how to physically do what you're doing, period. Can you please uh, let us know how we can appreciate art generally as Nigerians, even as Port Harcourt, because you mentioned earlier that art is not really appreciated here in Port Harcourt. Yeah. So how can we do that? How can we get people to appreciate it more? Yeah, uh, uh, our roundabouts, um, there, there, there are few art schools, not few art schools, there are art schools in Port Harcourt. And in these in this art schools, there are works that are done by students. Uh, and I expect that uh, uh, the, the, the Department of Fine and Applied Arts in the schools where arts are done should be able to liaise with government to say, this roundabout, we are going to give you this at peace to show exactly what uh, they, we want. It's not because the students, as project for students, there are art pieces that are done. And so these art pieces should add on, the government should select pieces that will tell the people that uh, this is what it, it is. Um, and so we don't need anybody 
as a matter of fact, I'm so pissed that uh, banks, banks will be uh, uh, showcasing and they are, they are what they are what, whatever at roundabouts. It shouldn't have, it shouldn't be like that. Artists should convince banks to say, "Can you commission us so that we can do pieces that will be mounted at the roundabout?" Because as a bank, you are not telling the you are not telling the people uh, that uh, this is exactly what is. But as as go to the go to the Department of Fine Applied as in 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 uh, yeah, there are pieces that. Oh, you know, wow. <laughs> it's interesting that um, I'm saying what I'm saying. Banks should go to the Department of Fine Applied Arts and commission students or say we want to mount. You just, you, you just put, you say, this was commissioned by the bank and the pieces are placed at the roundabout to teach, tell the people that art is an integral part of us. Now, so let's look at international exhibitions. Getting back to the uh, pre-colonial era, the various provinces of Nigeria before it became... Uh, okay, all right, let's look at international exhibitions. Getting back to pre-colonial era, different, uh, different ethnic groups in Nigeria, they had their unique art pieces. Yes. That when the colonial masters arrived, some of these artworks were carted away. Yeah. And, you know, they're still being exhibited in those countries. What do you think about that? They are returning them now. Uh, mm -hmm. where there's an advocation for those pieces to be returned. Because when those pieces were taken away, it was like uh, uh, they are fetish, they are fetish pieces. Uh, they, they, uh, the disabled are, disabled are, um, fetish. It's not true. Mm. What 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 they took away were masterpieces of various um, uh, uh, artistic um, prowess of people who did them. It wasn't. How do you take a piece away from here and you can't display them in your museums? And there's an advocate for those pieces to be returned back. And you, there's some museum in Europe or wherever the museums are, you go, you don't pay to go and see works. Yeah. And unfortunately, to in a museum, say, do they pay to go and... In a museum in Africa, do people go pay to go and see works in the museum? So what are we talking about? Those pieces that are there, uh, whatever museums and whatever happened to us, let them bring them back. They are not fetish pieces. They were pieces done by very renowned uh, um, artists. Look at the, the uh, uh, Edo and their bronze, their bronze. Uh, even, see, whether we like it or not, we were just uh, not being able to make them understand that what you took away must be brought back. Now you've recently been awarded Master Cover of the Niger Delta. That is such a huge mm. conferment. How does it feel, sir? It's a challenge. When 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 I was told that that was going to be an award, I felt a little bit uh, scared. But then, if I had not worked, you know for that recognition to come, I wouldn't have been able to um, um, uh, defend it. But I'm happy that I did. And then uh, I went to the exhibition with uh, a work titled The Fisherman's Palo. And The Fisherman's Palo is the second series of The Fisherman's Palo. The first series of the Fisherman's Palo is now in a museum in uh, Bayasa State, you know, in Yenagua. The museum, the uh, Bayasa State Museum, the first edition of the Fisherman's Palo is there. So the second edition of the Fisherman's Palo was what I exhibited at the last exhibition. 
it was a huge challenge to be able to and it took me sleepless nights took me without the power to uh, know there was no light how to get to uh, buy fuel to be able to generate because uh, without power you don't work our power tools i use power tools mm. so it was a successful outing i made so the fisherman's follow is my pride and uh, fortunately uh, as i went to uh, lagos the fisherman's follow was sold wow yeah all right, congratulations on that. Thank you. Sir. All right, so can you share any upcoming projects or future directions for your work? I'm going to work on uh, the, the traditional African court. The traditional African court is um, a chief or a king with his um, um, wives, with his chiefs. I like doing things in units. Mm. I, don't, I don't want to do works where you can use. I like doing work that can be used. You can sit like where I'm sitting now. Utility. I believe that art must be utilitarian. You must, apart from what other thing they want to do with art, I believe that if you do an artwork, can somebody use it? Can somebody sit on? Is it possible for somebody to be able to enjoy using it? That's my dream. And so I will continue to pursue that dream. All right. Thank you very much, sir. This has been such an enlightening conversation with you. But before we go, can you take us around your studio and uh, show us a couple of sculptural pieces and uh, the okay, Of course, of course, of course, of course. Right. Why not? Shell, but shell, the S is in parenthesis, is hell. And these people have exploited us and they are about going. Uh, they are come from a community where um, it has, uh, they have exploited and exploited, but the community remains worse off. And if you look at this and take a look at it, Look at what has happened to him because he said certain things shouldn't happen. And because of that, something happened to him. And the rest is history. I am a sculptor. And what you see here, is a dining table. And this dining table, all the legs and the components of the dining table are carved. They are carved, they are carved woods. I have, I have, I have a way that I do the things I do when it comes to carving. There are a lot of other pieces that you can see around. <laughs> yeah. Now this piece, uh, what does this piece signify? Yeah, it's a mask. And what technique? Yeah, it's, it's carving. Okay. Mm. They're all masks. Are there different styles of carvings you can use to achieve a particular piece? 
Then no, it's not exactly. Okay. Workshop. Uh, my workshop used, used to be here, but um, after the exhibition in Lagos, I moved, I've moved my workshop uh, to uh, this other uh, area, and it's uh, a workshop. Uh, this 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 space I have here is a space for me now. And, um, people are working. This piece here is um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on the piece. Yes, I'm working on the piece that uh, has been commissioned. And th this piece that is commissioned is uh, the the Virgin Mary that I'm working on. This is preliminary stage of what I'm working on. Set on Patakot, Pius Waratimi continues to sculpt his dreams into reality, leaving behind a legacy that will inspire generations to come. To our viewers, thank you for joining us on this artistic journey. Until next time on ATN Art World, remember to keep exploring, creating, and embracing the beauty of art. Stay connected on ATN socials. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook and YouTube, Atlantic Television Network. Instagram and TikTok, Atlantic TV Network 1. X, formerly Twitter, Atlantic TV Net. Watch us live on our website, AtlanticNetwork.tv. Peace and unity are the pathways to progress. I am Susan Abbey. <laughs>